to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us, and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter, and John, and James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The Word of the Lord. Please say with me Psalm 68. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the celerity a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in dry places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth, sing praises to the Lord. He rides in heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. 
Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be to God. A reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. The words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, St. James. On this seventh Easter, uh, we started out with a text from John, uh, John 17. And this is uh, Jesus' high priestly prayer. And uh, uh, this uh, John 17 prayer that we're seeing, we're seeing a small snippet of that. The prayer actually goes uh, the full uh, chapter of 17. And when we when we look at this uh, this high priestly prayer, uh, it's broken down. Not only is the lectionary going to break it down over three years, we're going to hear a little snippet of it today, 1 through 11. Next year, we're going to hear uh, the middle portion, and then uh, on your C, we're going to hear the very end of this priestly prayer on 7 Easter. Um, and uh, the way this prayer is broken down is, is significant for us. Um, 17, 1 through 5, Jesus prays uh, to the Father for himself. 
Um, and we see a shift um, in 6 through 19 where Jesus prays for the disciples uh, that are present there in the room with him, the, the, the disciples that are there uh, ministering with him and, and um, uh, have seen his ministry. And then the, the balance of, of, the, um, of the prayer, uh, Jesus prays for the believers to be, which are you and, and me. Uh, it's a it's it's a great model for prayer for us. Um, it's it's been said that this is the model of prayer, even more so in John, more so than than the uh, Lord's prayer. But um, I'll let you make that determination. But I really want to take a few minutes this morning and open this this prayer up a little bit. So I'm going to ask you to, uh, if you have your Bible sitting next to your uh, chair, your lazy chair, your uh, comfortable lazy chair, uh, pick that Bible up. If you don't, take a minute, get up and go get your Bible and uh, turn with me uh, to John uh, chapter 17. And let's look at this prayer. This um, this prayer, I want to remind us that we're in John, which you remember that John is about believing, not about faith, but it's about believing. And I always like to remind, remind people of that when we're talking about John. John has a different way of looking at things, and we're going to see that in, in, this, uh, in this prayer that John uh, puts forward to us a little different understanding of um, a few words. And we'll talk about that. So let's start out uh, John chapter three, uh, uh, chapter 17, verse three. Let's go straight to verse three on that. And that says, now this, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only, God, the only true God and Jesus whom you have sent. This understanding of uh, now this is eternal life um, in John, doesn't refer to um, doesn't refer to this uh, this kind of uh, a time after death our, our life on earth ends, but it's a it's a now it's an eternal life that happens right now while we're living right now, um, and it's about uh, knowing God and and knowing Jesus that makes this eternal life. Uh, possible for us now. I know y'all heard me talk about um, the, the Bible and Scripture is not about uh, what happens after we leave this earth, but it's about having your best life here. That's what this John uh, chapter 7 verse 3 is talking about. It's about having eternal life right now, right now. The best life you can have uh, through the, the belief that Jesus is who Jesus is and that God is the creator of all. So that verse 3, now is eternal life, is a great, a great thing to, to highlight or to circle in your Bible. Now let's go on to verse, verse 4. Verse 4, I have, brought you, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now remember, this is Jesus praying for himself. And he's talking about this glory or this glorification. And um, in John, glorification is, is, is not about um, prestige or deification or, or some of the other um, things that, uh, that, that can be um, uh, exaltation, worship, praise, some of the things that we would naturally associate with glorification. Glorification is more of, of uh, making God visible in the world today. So... Um, for us, glorification would look um, like our actions, how we act, how we pray, how we, how we behave. You remember uh, there's a portion where Jesus says, they're going to know you by uh, the love that you have for one another. Uh, that would be the type of glorification that Jesus is talking about. But about making God's presence visible in the world today, not this, not this um, uh, uh, way of... of Elevating God to something more than than uh, that He is in John, but that that glorification is about making God's presence. Now let's move let's move uh, quickly. I know I'm going through this quick uh, to verse six. Now remember we've transitioned in verse six. We've transitioned from from Jesus uh, praying for Himself to Jesus praying for uh, for His disciples. So in verse six it says, "I have revealed you to those whom you gave to me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me." And they have, they have uh, uh, obeyed your word. In this verse 6, the word knowing is a, is a, a synonym for relationship. So um, if, if we talk about knowing, it's not, it's not this um, cognitive 
um, understanding, but it's it's more of a of a relationship. It's about it's about knowing in a in a very personal way, like you would know family, like you would know family and be related to 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 um, to knowing somebody through that relationship. It's a, it's all for for John. It's all about relationship, and this knowing is is about understanding. Who God is, not only in our lives but in the world, and um, and this this prayer is opening that up. And how, by the way, how cool is it that we get to overhear this prayer? That just you know, most of the time uh, we see Jesus kind of walking off in the wilderness, going to the rocks in the Garden of Gethsemane, and doing those things. And here we get to actually overhear this beautiful priestly prayer, and he he opens up things like glorification and knowing and those things. Now I want to uh, I want to move all the way down, jump down to verses um, a ten and eleven, and I'm going to go through those real quick. So I, I hope you're following with me in your Bible. This is all really important stuff and plays into uh, into this wonderful priestly prayer. So I'm going to go all the way down to the end of our reading today. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. And the the key kind of take home for me is that they are one as we are one. What what an extremely powerful um, comment that Jesus is putting forward that um, that this this community of believers is made is made um, one by their belief in who Jesus is and also who God is. Um, what, a, what a wonderful uh, uh, understanding. And this, this understanding is, is, is more than, than just, um, than one of, once again, this cognitive understanding, but this knowing is, is having them out. Uh, that, that brings us into into this oneness with God and uh, in John it's I'm going to use kind of a churchy word here it's, it's it's an existential understanding that God is with us it's it's God is present with us and when I think about this um, I'm, I'm kind of drawn back to to, to Moses in um, in in uh, the Exodus story uh, chapter 25 where um, where God tells Moses to build a tabernacle, a, a mishka, a mishkan, a mishkan Hebrew, uh, which is translated tabernacle. And this is where God chose to reside, not reside some far off place in a, on, a, on, a, um, on a throne uh, way away, removed from us, but no, right in the middle of the Israelite camp, he chose to, to reside in the mishka, in the in the tabernacle, and I, I think that it's um, it's it's uh, evident for us even in our our worship today that that we still we still have a tabernacle. That this this box back here behind me with the with the sheep on it, um, that's called a tabernacle, and it's where uh, we we keep the reserve host, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Is present in our space. It's it's kind of what keeps us coming back to church week after week, isn't it? That God is in not only in the space, but that God is present with us. And I'm I'm reminded even even further about God being with us that that Saint Paul um, in in uh, his first letter to the Corinthians um, he says this. He says he says um, uh, your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Your body, our bodies are temples for the Holy Spirit. God present with us. There's, there's this time when, when Jesus ascends and, and then there's a space of about 10 days before the Holy Spirit comes where, where um, they call it the, the, the great absence, uh, the Sunday of the great absence. How not true is that? That God is still present with us. God is still here and available for us. Um, what a uh, what a, a powerful image that is for us to know that that um, through through this 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 visual tabernacle that we have, that God wants to tabernacle with us. He wants to be with us, to be present with us, to be one with us. Powerful, powerful. 
And I want to say that in this understanding that when God wants to be present with us, even though the Holy Spirit indwells each of us, that this presence is done in community. Um, our community being St. James, the Episcopal Church, Christianity, that God wants to be with us and present with us, that it's not done in singularity, but it's, it's done in community. And how blessed we are to be able to have this technology where we can join together, even though we're apart a little bit, uh, we're still able to come together as a community and worship God and ask God to be present. Um, there's a, another section that says uh, in Matthew 18 where two, Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in, in my name, there I'll be among you. Um, what a powerful image that God chooses to be with us, to tabernacle with us in this. And, and in the process, we're made one with the Father. So you can see, you get, kind of get a sense of how important this priestly prayer is that Jesus offers. Um, and there's, there's more to come. Next year we're going to hear a little bit more of this priestly prayer. And we'll open it up hopefully a little bit more next year. But I have a few things that I want to leave you with today. During our time um, when, we're, when we are praying for each other, where we're being present for each other, where we're trying to, uh, to, to kind of glorify God um, and to make Him known in the world, this time where, where, we're, where we're thinking about others and others' health and others' safety, um, it's, it's our time to glorify God, to make Him known in the world through our, our prayers and our acts of kindness, through our, um, our continued faithfulness to be present to the community and to each other, um, to, to practice our generosity uh, with, with others and uh, always to witness to our neighbors, always to witness to our neighbors. Um, and in the process of doing that, uh, we tabernacle with God. We, we become uh, one with God. God rests with us. He sits with us um, through our common worship together. Um, and experiencing the sharing of God's presence among uh, the ecclesia, the church, not just St. James, but the whole of Christian, of the Christian faith. And remember that this is an example that Jesus prays for us. Um, such a powerful uh, witness that Jesus offers uh, his conversation with the Father, and we're able to witness that, him praying for his disciples, for us. You know, soon Jesus is going gonna, is gonna to get up. He's going to cross the Kidron Valley, and he's going to go in, and the passion narrative is going to begin. This is a final act that he does. He chooses to pray for himself, verses 1 through 5. But then he prays for everybody else. What a wonderful act. Jesus is going to continue to pray that we're one with the Father as he and the Father are one. This indwelling Holy Spirit that helps us to stay within the presence of God. And that gives us eternal life. My friends, if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know the presence of the Holy Spirit, and you have not yet been introduced to a, the God and the Father of creation, reach out to us. We want to help. We want to introduce you. We want to pray for you and pray with you. God bless. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. 
in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer, or in your service bulletin. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, George and Michael, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray, Father, for our first responders, the men and women of our military. Pray for the doctors and the nurses and the medical teams that are caring for the coronavirus victims. We pray for the victims themselves, for health for them. We pray for those on our parish prayer list. We pray for the truck drivers and those who are delivering the goods we need. We pray that you would restrain this pandemic from us, allow us freedom again, allow us to come together again as a, as a church family here in this space. We pray for the prisoners and the captives and those who care for them. We pray for all who have been economically hurt by this coronavirus, for the unemployed, the destitute, for those experiencing depression, anxiety, and fear. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For those who stand watch while we sleep and rest. For the doctors and nurses that are working on the coronavirus for this parish family and for our individual families, and for the technology that allows us to be together even though we are socially distant. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning, St. James. Good morning. I am so glad that you chose to join us today uh, for worship, our worship Sunday worship on the 7th Easter. Um, there are a few announcements that I want, to, uh, I want to bring to your attention. First of all, today is our, our blood drive. Uh, we have three large uh, buses out in our parking area uh, that are waiting for you to come and to, uh, and to donate blood. Uh, as you all are very aware, uh, the blood supplies are way down. So we need your help. Um, if you haven't made an appointment, you're welcome to come on down and to, uh, to get in line. I will tell you uh, the most efficient way is just to go online and uh, to Carter Blood Drive, choose our location, and then choose a time, and then come on down. They're going to be here until either 2 or 3 today, and we would love for you to participate. Last time we did this, uh, uh, about eight weeks ago, we had more participation than we've ever had, um, and we are so uh, thankful for that. We're hoping that, once again, that you'll choose to, uh, to come and, and give blood. A uh, very worthy thing that we need to do right now, and also uh, really does show um, uh, our our uh, Christ to the world uh, example that we talked about in our sermon today. Um, next week, next week is Pentecost. Now, normally our Pentecost would be uh, large here. Uh, we would have a gathering afterwards um, because of social isolation. Obviously, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. However. Our bishop is going to be here. Um, he is going to come in and uh, record our sermon um, and, uh, and celebrating. So next week we'll be doing this um, virtual uh, thing again um, online. And uh, we, we uh, ask that you please tune in and see our bishop uh, deliver his message to us. We are working hard as a community to try to get back um, together safely. Uh, we'll let you know more about that as, as that becomes available. Um, but we uh, continue to be, uh, to be um, safe in our, in our worship uh, through this, this medium, and we're so blessed to be able to do that. We have Christian Ed offerings right now. Uh, we have Christian Ed offering at, um, at 10 o'clock today. Uh, Rector's Forum, a bite-sized Bible study. So come on and join that. It's a systematics uh, thing that, we're, that I'm teaching. Um, if you need that Zoom information, you can, uh, you can text me or email me, text Tony or email Tony and get that information. We'd love for you to join us via Zoom. Um, also, uh, uh, Father DJ still is offering his uh, class on Wednesdays. And then Tony is uh, offering lots of things for the kids. Um, we hope that you're taking advantage of those. And, of course, Jared um, is reaching out to our youth in a, very, in a mighty way. So we hope that you're, you'll continue to, uh, to join in in that. We have some birthdays and some anniversaries this week. And so we would like to, uh, we'd like to start out with our birthdays. So if you would, uh, if you would turn to, uh, in your BCP to page 830, we're going to use prayer number 51 um, on page 830. And uh, this is the prayer for a birthday. And I would like to wish all you guys a very happy birthday. Um, and I look forward to you guys coming back and being back so we can do this in person. But let's do this. Let's do this right now. So uh, if you have your BCP, please, please pray with me. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his or her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise them up when they fall. In their hearts may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Also for our anniversary, folks, our first folks uh, celebrating their anniversary, either this past week or next week, let's say a prayer for them as well. So please join me in a prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the institute, institution of marriage. In it, you show us the best of Christ's marriage to the church, and through it, we are able to grow not only closer to you, but closer to each other. Lord, I ask your continued blessings on these, your couples who are celebrating their anniversary. May this be uh, one of many anniversaries that they will celebrate, and may you be blessed, uh, may they be blessed by you in their uh, union. And this we ask through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And also to you, blessings of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you both now and evermore. Amen. 
I hope you've enjoyed uh, our worship so far. We've got a little bit more to go. We uh, will move quickly into our uh, into our Eucharistic service. I do want to uh, to make a plea to you if uh, if you're continuing to uh, to pledge. Thank you. We are so blessed by that. If uh, if you're uh, moving back into a place where you can, um, uh, are, you are blessed by God, and you can give to the church, please do so. Uh, we uh, we would love to see a check, or uh, you can go online at www.stjamesdallas.org forward slash give, and um, and uh, give that way, or you can have your bank do that electronically. Either way, we're blessed by that. As we continue in worship, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Stand before you. 
In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed James, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the Church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray together a prayer for spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are given this day. I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, in my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. 